What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful, delicious, smoky, freshly caught smoked catfish and a beautiful smoked salmon steak. Cam it up! One request I get on this channel more often than not is how to smoke fish. And there's several approaches you can take when smoking fish. One of which is throw the whole fish on the smoker, fill the cavity up with some herbs or aromatics or something like that. Really tasty. Another method would be to throw some straight fillets on there. That's a really quick cook. You're not gonna get too much smoke flavor, but you know, something like a salmon fillet, real easy, real quick, great for a weeknight dinner. And then there's cold smoking fish, which is what I think a lot of people are referring to. And it just so happens a few weeks back when I was up in Chicago, I stopped by Calumet Fisheries which is a super old school joint that is still cold smoking fish and have been for decades. Let's take a look at that. We are here at Calumet Fisheries in Chicago. Famous fish spot, it's been around since 1948. It's one of the last places in town that can do actual wood fired smoked fish, no liquid smoke or anything like that. And the coolest part is Health Code says you can't use wood fired cookers anymore, but they're grandfathered in because they've been around for so long. And they're right by this iconic bridge as well. Guy's got a lot of pickup. You think you can make that jump? You sprint out the bridge and then it propels you. Catfish as well? Yeah, hold on. Don't take it there. I'll like it. You gotta get the salmon. It's classic. Pepper <laughs> salmon. Pepper salmon. That's awesome. Hey, because Evan's a big fan of catfish. He is, he is a catfish. Ooh. Ooh, that catfish is really cool. That's it. Both the salmon, that's it, and the catfish. There it is. The oldest smoker in the world. Hell yeah. Smoked catfish. Hello. Incredibly good. This piece I love down here, the belly. Look at all that fat. It's so good. Fatty salmon, so good. Peppery. I love the experience too. I feel I really feel like I'm eating barbecue right now. You know what I mean? Looks good. You know, that's not bad. Tastes like a freshwater fish, a little bit dirty, but I mean, not bad. Tell you what would be really good is a little cold smoked fried catfish. I wonder if somebody's gonna do that for catfish boys. That place is super cool. The fish was really smoky, but not overly smoked. Still nice and flaky, kind of greasy. It's a whole different eating experience from any other way of cooking fish. And that catfish, I've never had catfish prepared like that. And it was absolutely fantastic. So that being said, that's what we're gonna make today. And it is going to be <gasps> delicious. This is a beautiful fresh catfish. And to show you where I got it, we're gonna go on another quick little adventure. Made it to Brinkley, Arkansas. We're here with Jonathan at Black Duck Revival. Yesterday we came out here in this little boaty boat and set up a bunch of limb lines. Now we're gonna go see what we got. Pull up them cats out of the water, man. Yeah. Woo, fish on. Yes. What, what a up? beautiful fish. That's a good looking cat. There you go. So that's a fiddler. 
mm -hmm. which is just, you know, traditionally the way we would do that is skin that sucker whole and fry it up. Bet. A couple of good fillets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a blue catfish? That's a blue, yeah. Yes. Right hand's a blue. Yeah. This one's a channel. Man. That's a yeah, pretty fish. That's a nice blue. Tell you what, though. I can get used to hanging out back here. Yeah. It's beautiful. Long. Look at it out there. Big boy. Stay away from my boots. Solid first day. Pulled out about, what, 10? About 10, 9, 10. Getting hungry. Yeah, it's time to eat some fish. Po boys? Po boys. <laughs> what a beaut. That looks phenomenal. Dude, thank you so much. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, so. What more do you want in life? Tastes even better when you catch them. Yes, it does. Wow. The color on that is gorgeous. Yeah, they are pretty, man. How you doing, buddy? That's a nice fish. Look how he's hooked. Mm -hmm. Oh, barely. Wow. Oh, oh, got him. Nice catch. Yes. This trout line's being good to us. Good looking kitties. Well, I must say that was quite an exciting adventure. Now it's time to head back to Austin and cook up some catfish. Thank you, man. Yep. <laughs> Again, big shout out to Jonathan Wilkins of Black Duck Revival. He's a super cool dude, very knowledgeable, and that's an experience I will never forget. And if you're interested in doing some catfishing or some duck hunting, be sure to look up Black Duck Revival up in Arkansas. I highly recommend it. So this is the catfish that I got to keep. Obviously not one of the bigger ones we caught, and that's because most of these catfish are at Leroy and Lewis for the Catfish Cooking Competition, aka Catfish Wars, the second annual. And if you want to learn more about that, you can head over to the Leroy and Lewis Patreon page, keep an eye on Instagram. Man, that's coming up in a few weeks. So this guy, I pulled out of the water on Thursday. It's now Saturday, nice and fresh. I already gutted it, cleaned it all out. And yes, it was humanely dispatched first. So now I'm gonna remove the head, cut the body into some cute little steaks, and we're gonna smoke them up. Remove that fin, remove that fin. I tell you what, it sure felt good to get back on the water and do some fishing. I used to go fishing pretty frequently up in New Hampshire, but ever since I moved to Austin, I haven't done any, and I sure do miss it. So if anyone wants to take me fishing around here, hit me up. I'm gonna make these pretty thick. Let's probably get maybe three out of this fish. Look at that beautiful little catfish steak. Mm. Big sharp knife comes in handy. Very nice. So now we got these beautiful three catfish steaks. I think it's time to throw them in a brine. For our brine, we are starting out with some water, to which we're gonna add a 6% salinity, which is pretty hefty. We're also gonna go in with some sugar, and we're just gonna whisk this up until it is fully dissolved. And the real benefit of brining your fish is not only is it gonna help with flavor, but also the texture. It's gonna help kind of firm it up a little bit. Beautiful. Also gonna go in with some dill and some tarragon because they're looking pretty sad. It's a great way to use up some old herbs or spices you've got lying around. Toss them in a brine or a stock or something. And I'm also gonna go in with a lemon. Add a little bit of acidity to the party as well as some wonderful flavor because you know fish and lemon are a match made in heaven. And now we go in with our little catfish steaks. And the beauty of brining fish is that it does not take nearly as long as beef or pork or something like that. I also picked up a salmon steak so we can really get that calumet experience. Salmon fishing is something that's definitely on the bucket list. So we're gonna let these sit in this brine for the next 30, 45, minutes and that should be plenty of time to get our smoker fired up. Basically I'm getting a really small coal bed going for one big dense log. I'm trying to rock this pit around 150-200 degrees nice and smoky. 
Because it's got less convection and airflow than an offset, I think this is gonna be a really great option. One hour later, these are coming out of the fridge and it is time to get them ready for the pit. Ooh, they have firmed up pretty nicely. You can see the color of the water has changed quite a bit. I think that's a good sign. So right now I'm just gonna pat these dry. Now at Calumet, they hang their fish. They take a piece of string and loop it right on through so it hangs, which I think is a great idea. It's good for sausage making too, just because you don't have to worry about great marks. And if you're cooking a lot of fish, you can get a whole bunch on a rod and it just makes transportation a little bit easier. I don't have a butcher's needle, so we're gonna see if I can manage to string these up. Oh, look at that, it worked. Oh, nice. So now that is wrapped right around the bone, so we can just tie this up. Couldn't get it through, so we're just gonna wrap it lengthwise. All right, I got these all tied up and on this piece of angle iron, and they are looking cute. As for this guy, got him tied up as well, and it is just looking beautiful. So to finish seasoning these off, I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of granulated garlic and some really coarse black pepper. This is how they do it at Calumet, and it tasted really good and looked pretty cool. Ooh. Smoky. In they go. This is gonna sit right where the grate usually does. On the opposite side, as far away from the fire as possible. Beautiful. So now we're gonna let these smoke for the next few hours. I assume the catfish, because it's so small, will only take maybe two hours, where that other one will probably take maybe four or five. But I will keep you posted. Very smoky. After about four and a half hours at 150 to 200 degrees, these fish steaks reached an internal temp of about 140, 145, and I pulled them off, put them on this rack, and let them chill in the fridge overnight. And I must say, I am pretty pleased with the color on there. Those all look super tasty, especially when compared to the picture of Calumet. That salmon looks pretty spot on. And yes, it is pouring rain out right now. The smell is super smoky. This feels really nice and tender. You can see how it's kind of oily up by the skin. Catfish picked up some great color, looking good. Love having these strings on there, super old school looking. But without further ado, I think it's time to dive in and see how this stuff came out. Go for some of that belly meat. Ooh. Wow, very nice and pink, looking real good, very tender. Flakes right apart. Oh, goodness. Oh, mm hmm. Oh, oh, man. Very smoky, very fatty. That, you know, this is that belly meat of the salmon. Mmm, it melts in your mouth. Nicely seasoned, too. That brine did its work. Ooh, nothing wrong with that, folks. Flaky. Tender. Wow. I'm kind of blown away right now. That is fantastic. Definitely keeping this one around. That pepper on there stayed on nicely. You got this nice pellicle on the outside, very smoky. But then this inside is just flake apart, super tender. Very reminiscent of Calumet. Now let's see how this catfish came out. Definitely feels a little drier, which is to be expected. You know, it's first of all, it's a much smaller piece. So that pellicle to, you know, inner flesh ratio is going to be a little bit off. Also, it's not nearly as fatty of a fish as the salmon. So it's not going to flake and be nearly as oily as that. That meat looks pretty good. Looking tasty. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, just as smoky. That kind of muddy taste you get from catfish is completely gone, which is nice. Probably from that salt water brine plus all that smoke flavor. Yeah, it's really clean tasting. Beep. Again, I think this would be a lot better with uh, a much bigger catfish. There's this meat on the inside. You can kind of see where the smoke penetrated the flesh. Really nice. Mm-hmm. And like Jonathan said, man, everything tastes better when you know you caught it yourself. Right down the old spine. So basically what I'm gonna do is take all this meat off the bones, which is incredibly easy, and then I'm gonna make a smoked fish dip because when life gives you smoked fish, you have to make smoked fish dip. For our fish dip, we are starting with some cream cheese. Softened, of course. Mayonnaise. Shot of Dijon, never hurt anybody. Dash of Worcestershire sauce. Someone took the pour spout off of the Worcestershire sauce. Pour some of that out. Some lemon juice. A little bit of prepared horseradish. Gotta go in with a little bit of hot sauce. For some seasoning, I'm going in with a little Tony C's. You could also go in with some Old Bay. Speaking of Old Bay, we're gonna get the essence by adding a little bit of celery salt. Freshly chopped dill, as well as some fresh parsley. Also gonna go in with some chopped pickles. Kinda play on the whole catfish tartar sauce vibe a little bit. Mix it all up, give it a taste, taste it for seasoning, make sure it's the right consistency. And that is looking pretty good to me. Just gonna go through and rough chop up this fish into the dip we go. And there we have it. A beautiful smoky fish dip. Oh, Gotta go for the belly. Salmon belly. Can't go wrong. It smells just like calamet. Oh, wow. Oh, baby. Mmm. Mmm. That is exactly what I want and what I need. It's incredibly good. The fat near the skin, 
and the pepper. So that's the catfish dip. Pretty pretty basic uh, fish dip, cream cheese based. Kind of went with a catfish and tartar sauce vibe. Yep. So it's kind of pickly. Delicious. It actually tastes like catfish. Mm -hmm. Fish dip across the board, it just tastes like fish. Mm -hmm. That tastes like catfish. I like it. It's actually like noticeably better than a couple hours ago when I made it. That's where it sat in the fridge for a bit. Fantastic. I want to sell these just like, just like that at the truck. Yeah, absolutely. It's so, so good, man. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to smoke fish. I really had a great time putting this video together, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know by hitting that subscribe button, and I definitely recommend giving this one a try. It's always fun to throw new things on the smoker. This is a pretty low effort cook, and the results are absolutely fantastic. That fish dip, mm, definitely gonna keep that one around. But if you do give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. Let me know down in the comments below what you wanna see me cook next. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to do all these fun things. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.